What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Dylan Talks Tone. Uh, welcome back to our little series about what we were doing at Texas Toast and learning how to build a guitar. This is the next step in this series of videos. We're talking about fretwork. This is going to be a long one uh, because this is honestly one of the most important and longest and most tedious um, processes of building a guitar, but it's the most important one of the most important, it's all important, but this is one of the most important. In fact, at this workshop, they dedicate an entire day to just this part of the process. So, you know, we're building a guitar, a guitar in five days and a whole, one whole day is just this. So uh, that's why it's important, but that's why this video is a little bit longer and uh, it gives you some sort of an idea of what you could look forward to if you went there, but also if it's something that you're diving into, yourself um kind of the right way to do things i know there's more than one way to do stuff but this the result is pretty fantastic so as we get into this i missed the part where they radius the fret wire with the stumac radius tool that radius is the fret wire into a big circle uh, and then they cut it into the links that are going to go in each of the fret wire slots uh, and then they press them in with a call so they don't use a hammer um, I missed this part because I was finishing up some pickup stuff from the previous day, wax potting some stuff and, and doing some various things like that. So I missed the part where they were actually pressing the frets in with a fret press call. They don't use a hammer. They use a press. It's like a two-ton press and they, they press them in and they come out pretty nice. Um, they come out pretty flat that way. You don't have to worry about a lot of work afterwards because they come out super even. They do use super glue. Uh, number 20 from Stumac, and they, they glue the frets in. It works really great. So at the end of that process, this is where we pick it up because we've got to start trimming and filing the ends and all that kind of stuff. This is where a guitar goes into next level quality, even at one of these workshops. Uh, what we're going to work on today is frets, and the first thing that we're going to do is trim the excess fret material off of the the necks that you guys fretted very excellently yesterday. Um, and I want everybody to get to the same, the same level that we're, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna demo for you now before we move on to the next step, okay? Um, tease, spoiler alert, the next step is um, putting a radius on the ends of the frets so you don't get those little pokey outy pointy bits. Um, uh, and like Phil McKnight says, we'll be able to run uh, a, uh, um, stocking. a stocking down the side of the fretboard without snagging and uh, and everything will feel really good um, because frankly we could run a stocking down the side of the fretboard now and, you know, <laughs> just and shred it yeah so um, the first thing we want to do is get these little nippers and just get as close as you can to the um, to the edge and nip that stuff off Rick before you ask you can do it like this if you want um, okay, Grant, before you ask, you can nip them any way you like. I like to, I like to do it uh, vertical. Uh, well, yeah, however, whatever the orient, however you orient the thing. Well, I like to do it like this. Um, How often do you get wood? Every morning, every morning baby. <laughs> That's a personal question. Um, you, you shouldn't, you shouldn't nab any of the. Uh, any of the edge of the, the fretboard. Um, and I think these have like a slight break on no, they sure don't. They're they're a they're a kind of a crisp corner. Um, so never. Okay. You should never, ever, ever Is this what those are called that? Get in any uh cutters? Yeah, not get any really. Well kind of flush cut. Yeah. yeah. You um, you can do it I have though. I've seen people do it, yeah. I mean you so could you could probably it. really get it in there and reg I, I kinda like to keep them flat. To the, to the face mm -hmm. here. I mean, I, as soon as you say you can't, it'll happen. You can't yeah. grab yeah. the the side of the fretboard with these. Somebody will 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 say, "Hold my beer and watch this." I have seen people Put damage, them wrong, damage the fretboard with them, so don't be that guy. That's the real takeaway. But yeah, the uh, now the the. The flip side to that is you want to take as much of the fret off as you can because that will save you uh, filing time 
next. Now, when I do this, I usually use a power tool, um, but I would like for you guys to use just a file. Uh, the edge sander. Oh. That's Leslie's favorite noise. <laughs> it's really soothing. You probably all fall asleep when you're doing it. So what we're doing is just getting the edge of the um, getting the edge of the fret. So if you were to run your thumb along the neck and, and just right straight out, you shouldn't be able to feel the fret. If you can feel any fret at all, like down here, you haven't done it enough. Okay. You let it right up against right up against the wood. Yeah, but you're jumping ahead because I was gonna say the in answer to someone's next question, don't worry about removing wood with this file. It'll take a little bit off. You can see mm -hmm. like some there, but it's not uh So you're doing it flat there, not at an angle yet. That's right. Uh-huh. And we'll get both sides. Like I say, take your thumb and just kind of go up the edge here. See what yours feels like? Yeah. So, and then feel right here, Rick, where the head didn't get. Mm. See what I mean? Okay. Anybody else want to? I want to check that out. So, at the, like the, at the 20th fret, it feels pretty good. And at the second fret, it's still, it's still kind of poking out a little bit. Once you get, once you get everything uh, uh, 90 degrees, or, or 89 degrees or 91 degrees, whatever it is. Then we're gonna to start to impart our 30 degree angle on the ends of the frets, okay? Um, you can, you can do this with a power tool, get close. You can do this with this, uh, this file here, but what I would advise you to use is this, this file, this piece of wood with a file built in at an angle that's 30 degrees um, and just run the uh, run the file along the edge so you like a 30 degree uh -huh. level? yeah uh, that's traditional i guess I, you know i don't know who chose it or why or whatever yeah i don't know who chose it or why they did but yeah. okay so I'm going, uh, I'm going kind of soft on this, and you'll notice that I'm cradling the neck. I've seen guys try to do this, or whatever kind of crazy thing. The closer, I like to get it fairly close to my body, because I can control the file, and I can stop the file before it hits the headstock. Um, but most importantly, what I don't want to do is have the file jump off and drag uh, the corner of the file mm. across the frets that we just spent a bunch of time getting nice. Okay. Um, if you do that, well, Chris is going to have to refret your neck because I'm not going <laughs> to. It, it does a lot of damage. Yeah, yeah. that much. built into this or is it just kind no of it's just flat so and you'll be able to see when the uh, when you get all the way down to the the rosewood what we want to do is we want that angle to go all the way to the rosewood and you can see there's some spots here I still haven't quite gotten yet um, <clears throat> are you worried about the neck throwing on you at all and not yet getting, uh... no Okay. 
so we're looking pretty good. Ah. Remember the file only works one way. Okay, so that's pretty good for that side. I can see where, um, if you hold it just in exactly the right light, you can see where the, the shine on the, on the frets, I'll pass this around so you guys can see, and, uh, and the fret bevel goes from the top of the fret all the way to the, uh, all the, way to the rosewood, except on that first fret. And so, why do you call it like a made in Mexico Fender or an Epiphone? This is kind of weird. It's probably where they'd stop. Yeah, yeah, they might they might run some uh, some Scotch Brite or some sandpaper down there. Um, but yeah, yeah, you're right. That'd probably be where they 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 go. Good to go. Um, maybe not, but that's I would I would joke about that. But then somebody would on YouTube say, "I work at the Squire factory, and I don't I I take a lot of pride in my work and." Um, How often do you hit the headstock? Uh, ideally, never. Some guys will put like a capo here to, to block the, uh, you know, stop the block from doing it. Um, and like I said, you can kind of just hold this at an angle and do it. Um, you can... Uh, while the other way, you can do this with power tools. But I, I think I think I see your point, Grant. You, you can uh, you can get so close to this that yeah, you could beat that headstock mm -hmm. uh, up a little bit. What grit do you use on your head sander when you do it on there? The the one twenty, the the the, the lightest one, yeah. So you know how much burnishing you like to do, Grant? Oh yeah, yeah. How does that not mess with the wood? Well, it 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 does mess with the wood. That's the whole point. <laughs> oh, yeah. you're burnishing the wood, basically. The wood. Yeah. yeah. So okay. okay, so I did in between the first and second fret on the base side. So feel the difference between the two. Or oh, it has a bit of a round. Over. Uh huh. Now it's not the same ridiculous rounder that you've right. seen pictures of, but we kind of want our frets to stay in on the end. Yeah. But yeah, you could you can burnish that over a little bit. So is that better than just running like 600 grit sandpaper? I think so. Hand? Yeah, because you're just getting the place where there's no fret, and we're gonna we're gonna be working these frets over quite a quite a bit. Um, but yeah, so if you want to do that later after we do the uh, the radius on the fret ends and get everything cleaned up, or you might go, hey, I like this just just fine. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. These blocks could be used like this. Mm. Don't. Wrong. See what I mean? Oh, then yeah. you have a 60 degree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Found off the frets that were on the, uh, that were hanging over the edge. Well, that's a lot easier that way. Uh, yeah, if you can just erase them, then, why yeah. Why use the eraser, yeah. Why? You why didn't you use the eraser. <laughs> you suck, man. Okay, so we got rid of all of that stuff. We filed the, the, the edge. Uh, I guess perpendicular or, or parallel to the edge of the fret. We filed it even with the edge of the fretboard. Then we imparted a 30 degree radius on all of our frets. And because the frets are domed, they, they look kind of like this now. And what we did was we basically made 44 little tiny chisels on the end of our fretboard. Right? It looks exactly just like this. So you have 88 little sharp corners on the edge of all your frets. And you have a burr on the top. Okay? So what we're gonna do now is we're going to break this corner off. And we're going to round it over. And it will take longer than what I'm doing on the, on the whiteboard. Okay? We're going to round these corners off. 
And then we're gonna remove this burr that's on all these uh, all these fret edges. Okay. And this is gonna take some time. So I want to show you guys how we do that. Will you give me the little the little file in there, Brian? So we're gonna be using this little file and don't be fooled it's still a heavy duty tool um and the first thing that i want you guys to do is break off the corners and Those you'll notice that there's a side. flat side mm -mm, okay there's the filing sides to this file and there's two other sides to the file there's a flat uh perpendicular to the filing sides and there's a curved arced radius to the radius. filing sides. Yeah. So I want you to get the flat side of the file and put it on the fretboard, okay? And then very lightly, just break <coughs> off that corner. Not trying to reshape the fret as much as we're trying to break off that corner. You notice that he's not running the file flat against the fingerboard, he's using the, the edge of that, that flat side of the file. And when you get them all, we'll come back and do the other side. Same thing. And it's, it's kind of a bummer to do sometimes. If you have a left-handed friend, have him do all the left sides. <laughs> Tim. Not, I am not your left-handed friend. Tim's Me left either. <laughs> no, we got okay. two lefties. You guys are in love. Um, Dylan, too. Yeah. Dylan and Chris get to do yeah, 188 but, frets. <laughs> but see how I'm kind of... My hand is making an arching or arcing motion. I'm not going at an angle. I'm actually trying to put a round over on it, not an angle, okay? Once you get those, switch to the, the curved edge and put that on the fretboard and just break off the corner or break off the, uh, the bird side. Okay, so you're using the file for both steps. Uh-huh, and all I'm doing is I'm not reshaping the fret, I'm just getting rid of that burr. So not a lot of pressure. Hardly any at all. So you have the flat, flush side facing, facing my, my eyes. Up. Yep. Okay. So now feel these first five and and feel the difference with um You should get your uh, your optimizers on and look at them too, because you can yeah. really yeah. see it. And I'll be coming along and inspecting with the optimizer, so don't tell me you can see because you can't. So far, 100% of the people who say they can see stuff can't see stuff. The visor really does make a, a yeah. big difference. You can really see a lot of a lot more detail. I can't see shit. <laughs> stuff that we're going to do is <clears throat> protect our fretboard and um, level and dress and polish and all kinds of that stuff. But before we put tape on the fretboard to protect the frets, let's check and see if our fretboard is flat. Thank you. Thanks to my lovely assistant. Mm -hmm. Thank you, really you, are. You are truly lovely, Chris. My, my frets are not flat. No, that's, we're just checking the board, okay? So I've got a notch straight edge here. <clears throat> and we'll help you with this. Um, so there's a couple of things. Before we start working these frets over, um, <clears throat> we want to protect the uh, yeah the fretboard. So uh, what we do is put a piece of tape on the edge. Um, <clears throat> the edge of the neck so that it just it's gonna make life easier when it's time to pull the individual pieces of tape off. 
<clears throat> and it's going to have uh, give you a, a layer of protection on the side. You don't have to cut it in half. That's just the way I do it. You could do whatever you want. Give everybody else skin in your There you go. Okay. So what we want to do is get the tape right up to the fret. And then use your M1 thumbnail to work it into the other side. Okay, and then take a razor blade and just cut the off side off. Okay, so you're basically cutting right where the fret joins the fret board. Once everything's trimmed, uh, then they will go ahead and crown uh, level and crown the frets. Now, <laughs> I missed to this part because squirrel. Literally, squirrel. All right, so we have a squirrel stuck in the uh, the, the heating intake, and uh, what we're gonna do? I'm gonna stand on this table on top of a ladder, and uh, uh, I'm gonna loosen the screws. Brian's gonna hold this broom up there so it stays. Don't worry, I got protection. Uh, <laughs> no, we don't need that for this guy, but yeah. He's about that big. Mm -hmm. There wasn't anything left of him. Okay, you ready, Brian? Is that? I don't know if I'm ready for this shit. Oh, here's my gloves, okay. You want this? No, I think, I think we're okay. Okay. All right, so the trick is, you gotta keep the thing up there. You guys, yeah, you gotta keep it up there. So, <laughs> you know I'm gonna get squirrel shit all over it, right yeah. under that fucker. Uh, not to mention whatever else is up there. Okay. You got it? Yeah. <laughs> ah, damn it. <laughs> it's not that easy, huh? Uh-uh. Well, can you get this other one or did you already do it? I haven't done it. I don't know if these come all the way out or what. Oh, okay, all right, push up. <laughs> push up in the middle. Uh, let me slide over. Okay. Can you reach that other one? Yeah. Okay, all right. All right. Looks like there's a filter up there too. Yeah. So I have no idea what's gonna happen now. All right, you just gonna let him go? I think so. Yeah. Oh fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> let him go. Run right out of the way, Brian. Yeah. yeah. Ready? I guess. Here we go. There we go.
Yeah, right. it's under the table. All he right, is now all we gotta do is catch the squirrel. All right. Hey, Chris. We need you. I think he's probably pretty stunned. Yeah, I can't imagine. Hey, get your gloves on and just see if you can grab him. Because you're not going to grab him. You see if you can grab him. Oh, no. He is, he is not stunned. He is very well. Oh, oh. hey, bud. He's right over here. He's a little guy. Let's try to shoo him out. Out the front? Um, sure. Or into there. Into there. <laughs> <laughs> Can you use those conduits or something to poke around and see if you can prod them out? I kind of want to vacuum all that shit. Move that up. Move it over here. There he is. I see his tail. <laughs> Let me see if I can scare him. What the fuck is he? In the wall now? No, he's right there. In the wall? Go. Come on, bud. Yeah, you can do it. You can do oh, it. Oh, Yay! There he goes. The squirrel removal, the squirrel removal process took uh, quite a bit of time. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do, maybe, if you want, is I will go ahead. I've been there enough times to have a fairly good idea. If you want, we can talk about fret leveling and crowning on this channel, and I'll just kind of give you an idea of what they do there and how they teach it, because I've watched Matt do it a bunch of times and I think I can give you a fairly accurate assessment of that. If you want me to do that on the channel, let me know because that's the part we missed and I know that's a lot of uh, what people really want to know about. So if you want us to do that video, we sure can. Uh, and then we go ahead and polish the frets. They don't just level and crown them and then kind of they're done. These things are mirror polished. Check this out. Let's just let this thing run until everybody's done, because you, you heard it start up. Um, at the beginning, each guy can chalk up a little bit. What is that? Um, it's uh, polishing rouge. Is it red? Uh, it's brown. It's, brown. It's, probably, it's probably a medium of some sort. Um, I don't use that wheel, I just use this wheel. Um, this thing doesn't turn super fast. I think it turns at 3,400 RPM. Um, did you do 1750? That one's 3400. Uh, we were using that one and it was heating up the frets and it was busting the super glue loose. And the frets were popping up, so this turns slower. You still don't want to heat the frets up, it's still possible to get them too hot. So this is another thing where I do a lot of counting and I'll only do them for so long and then I'll move on. Um, so you don't want to push too hard, it's, it's fairly light touch. It is possible to slow the wheel down. Don't do that. Yeah. Um, the other thing, I don't, well, I will do this, but, well, here, I'll show you as we're doing it. So I'll do about three quarters of the fret. And it, as you can see, I'm doing four, uh, four passes. One, two, three, four. Then I'm moving on. <coughs> and two frets at a time? Um, two or three, or, and then later on just one, because you can only get, yeah. You can hear it, so that's how you want to sound like it. Yeah, you don't want to, you don't want to slow it down. Chris will yell at you. You're pushing too hard. Both Matt and I will yell at the same time. You're pushing it too hard. Yeah, get your head out of your ass. Okay, and now I'm going to pol polish the, the top edge of these. So I'm going to do it here. When, when you're coming this way, it could grab it and, and no, I mean, hit you. Flip no. over the neck. Like, flip over the neck and no. do it like that? No, head to toe. To do the end like then that, so it's not. Cool. Well, I will. Okay. Don't worry. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just doing the top of it there now, because I want to. Because I want to get the the bevel part polished as well. Okay. Now I'm gonna flip it. You can check it for heat. Yeah, it's it not, not even. Touched, was it a little warm? Yeah. yeah it's not not crazy, but yeah. You can also do this because fingers aren't overly 
overly sensitive probably at this point. <coughs> and now I'm going to do this three quarter. And polishing just a neck is infinitely easier than the whole guitar. Yeah. And as I was talking, I forgot where I was. So I go through the process, and then I'll double check them. Look, you got block inlays. I was just gonna say, <laughs> and I'll uh, I'll look at them, and I'll like kind of look at them in the light and see if I can see any scratches. And usually, the place that you'll see a scratch is right along that top edge. The sides all buff out really well. I can see, yeah, they're they're pretty shiny, but I think I'm gonna buff them just a little bit more because I caught just a little bit of a of a thing on this one. So I'll do a little bit more. At this point, you have a fretboard and a neck that is just like looks fantastic. So uh, in the next video, then we're gonna start to see as much of the process as I could catch anyway on Friday, the putting together of um, all of the pieces and parts like then we're going to start really working on nuts and setup and tuners and all that kind of stuff and the final setup of the guitar which is really really cool and it's a little bit different than when you set up a guitar that you buy at the store so that it's a little bit more involved so uh you know because we're doing it from scratch so you will see that in the next video thanks for hanging out for this series i hope you have enjoyed it it's these are long videos but they really get in depth and i hope you've enjoyed the getting in depth please hit the subscribe button and the like button because um, we want to do more of this kind of stuff where we're kind of diving into some of these processes and even pickup making processes around here. So if you're into this kind of stuff, uh, more informal shop type videos like this, please let me know in the comments because this is something that I really enjoy doing. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you in the next video.